Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 12th, 2017. Happy Wednesday afternoon to you. Let's take a look at what's going on in the tropics. 21 years ago today, something was going on, and that was Hurricane Bertha that came up along the coast here and made landfall in eastern North Carolina. I was out at Wrightsville Beach in vicinity as my first direct hurricane impact, I guess you will, if you will. Uh, yeah, I had others as a kid. There were close calls, Hurricane Diana in 84, Gloria in 85, and then really Bertha in 1996 was the first core of a hurricane that I had ever been in, followed a few weeks later by Fran. Nothing out there like that today, though. We do have broad rotation down here approaching Central America with this tropical wave, uh, probably some decent low-level vorticity here. Uh, Upper-level winds kind of strong on the north side of it. Some convective activity moving towards the Windward Islands. So you folks down there, keep an eye on that, mainly because of the increase in shower and thunderstorm activity, locally gusty winds. But overall, the intertropical convergence zone through here is squashed. And you can see that the, the way the air mass is moving here, you know, high pressure is really dominating over the Atlantic right now. Uh, very typical for July, the pressures typically peak in July. Then they ease off in August and September, and really it's later in August, and I'm going to talk about that in more detail on Monday. But nothing to worry about, especially, uh, and also from XTD4 somewhere in here. Maybe that's it there. Remember, just pointing it out that the European model thought this might come back and maybe come in towards Louisiana here. Uh, that's not going to happen. I'm 95% sure. Maybe even 97%. And also, of course, the GFS really... Uh, kind of goofed things up thinking that this would develop out here and become a menace to the Caribbean. That's not going to happen either. So I guess we can enjoy the quiet. Where are things busy? Well, it's out in the eastern Pacific. We now have Tropical Storm Fernanda. And this is going to move off to the west and maybe even south of west with time. And even if it makes it as far west as the longitude of Hawaii, way over here, I believe we can all agree that this cloud cover indicates quite a different air mass in place overall than what we're seeing over here. So we'll watch. This will add some ACE points, accumulated cyclone energy points, to the overall East Pacific Index, and probably that's about it. Looking at sea surface temperatures, I want to show you this. The uh, colder waters churned up because of Cindy, you know, back in June, Remember, it's like a big area through here that was, you know, 27 Celsius and all churned up. Well, that's all gone away. And now we have lots of areas uh, now, you know, at 30 Celsius. And the rest of the Gulf, for the most part, dominated by 29 Celsius or higher. Basically, we're talking about the, you know, 83, 84, almost 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we go back and look at the visible satellite shot again here, you notice the Gulf is absolutely clear of any convective activity, no organized storms, and so the sun is just being absorbed into that water uh, very efficiently. And if you're out there on these oil platforms, you know, and I've heard from some of you talking about that. So the Gulf has warmed right back up, the Atlantic Basin getting warmer as well, a little bit of hope for you folks up here on the mid-Atlantic states. There is the 26 degrees Celsius line. It's about 79 and a half Fahrenheit, and that's it right there. You can even outline that little notch right through here, right? I think I got it right. Maybe that's 25. I don't know. But um, it's getting there, right? And so be patient. The warmer water's headed your way uh, from the Carolinas, Pamlico Sound especially, and points south and west, 28, 29 Celsius, low 80s, very pleasant. The anomalies from the Reynolds Method in the National Hurricane Center site this is a weekly sea surface temperature anomaly map, all right? And this is the Reynolds method. It's just a different background methodology. And the thing to point out here is how warm the eastern Atlantic is. You know, I guess if you went in and tried to average all these pixels out or whatever, you know, you're looking at got to be close to a degree Celsius on average, uh, above average is the mean out here. And even the western Atlantic here, the northwest Atlantic, with the exception of this one cold pool right off of Cape Cod running above normal as well. And look, 
according to the Reynolds method here, again, this is a weekly average or update over the past week, uh, only little one little area there below average. So the golf definitely warming back up post-Cindy. Hey, I wanted to show you this because it's funny. It's a glitch in the equatorial sea surface temperature anomaly for the subsurface. Um, well, you know, if that happens, then it's back to ice age time. <laughs> I, just, I had to laugh. I was like, wow, that's a problem. It's just a glitch in the output of the, the graphic. Um, so, yeah, you've got insane cold anomalies in the upper uh, 150 meters of the ocean, followed by some kind of volcanic melting of the, the crust or whatever and lava spewing out at 450 meters deep. Um, so we'll cool off, followed by being burned alive. Yikes. No, not seriously. Uh, this is, so this, that's fake news. There you go. I'm just making that up. It's just a glitch in the particular graphic here. But I saw it, and I thought it was funny. I knew it wasn't accurate the moment that I saw it. We will go over this when it gets corrected on Monday as part of the general look at sea surface temperature anomalies and the El Nino Southern Oscillation State, all kinds of good things coming up on Monday. So have a laugh at that because it's, it's not real. This is real, the current upper ocean heat content. This continues to grow and expand, as you'd imagine, all around the basin here, warming up. And we'll monitor this over the coming weeks and months. And eventually there'll be a hurricane on here to track. And actually, in our app, Hurricane Impact, um, we do have this map as the background map when we have a cyclone in the Atlantic where you can track them over this particular graphic. Um, I don't know of any other apps that do that on a regular basis. We generate it ourselves, so it's not even a NOAA product. The background map is from the uh, AOML uh, down at Hurricane Research Division, but I just thought I'd put a plug in. So, if, for example, you know, if we had a, a hurricane coming out of the main development region, and let's just say it was here, and then this was the five-day forecast, you would see it plotted on this map, and you would know, ooh, wow, it's going to be headed towards warmer upper ocean heat content. It's just a nice visual, and we have that in our app uh, when it's active. It's not there now because we're not tracking anything. And this is why. The intertropical convergence zone, again, whoops, uh, nice and suppressed by strong high pressure over the Atlantic here, and that's very dominant right now, dry, dusty air coming off, literally just smothering everything. And I'm going to say it again, it's normal for this time of year. It does not mean that the hurricane season is not going to be active, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball missing their first shot or two in a row. You know, they're normally a very good shooter, maybe one of the best in the league, and they blow a couple of open shots, and everybody says, oh, boy, probably not going to be a good game. No, they don't say that. They say they're going to get on a hot streak soon and look out, and I think that's what's going to happen in the Atlantic and I'm going to talk about that more on Monday as well. The GFS gets an upgrade uh, coming up, and that will help with some things. We're going to look at the overall um, seasonal progression of how things normally work. And yeah, I think you'll get a good perspective. Sometimes you need a reminder. We had all of this activity, and then it dies down. And even in 2005, the season to end all seasons, in modern times anyway, there were lulls. And we went through July after Dennis and Emily with quite a bit of a lull until we got later on. We had Franklin, Gert, and Harvey or whatever. And eventually we got up into where we had Katrina at the end of August. But in between, there were these lulls, even in super active seasons. For now, it should be pretty quiet in the Atlantic Basin, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, pretty much in the null phase according to the Euro and its ensemble members here. So even despite that, we do have Fernanda, you know, with this null phase. When you see it in the circle, we call it, you know, low or no MJO activity to speak of. But even in the face of that, and another way to look at it, in the absence of widespread upward motion, we can get something to develop, like we have with Fernanda in the eastern Pacific. So over the next couple of weeks, this is forecast to move around the different phases, and maybe, we'll see, as it gets around, does it come full circle? Big question mark here. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But that's what we do here. We look at things, and we analyze them, and we try to figure out the future together. Sometimes it's easy, and sometimes it's not. 
Uh, and that's what makes it, I don't want to say fun, but it keeps you engaged. That's a good way to put it. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow. And then again on Monday, and we'll just pretty much do Monday and Thursday uh, from there on until something pops up again that warrants more attention. So do have a great rest of your Wednesday afternoon. I'm Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.